All right, the, uh, the numbers are rolling down there. Good morning, dear brethren, dear saints, dear church of God, which is the church of the living God, pillar and ground of the truth. <clears throat> well, um, let's let you all know, another spicy day here in glorious Woodstick, Illinois. Got a video coming where we're going to be in Isaiah 47 and 48. But that's not today. Um, today, today is 19th. Today is 19th. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please, uh, <laughs> please, dude, please. Read along with me in the scriptures that we will look at today, please. Okay? Um, I make mistakes. All right? I am not trained by men. Okay? <laughs> I make mistakes. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Beware of people who claim to rightly divide, but say it is by grace through faith from beginning to end. Now, there are some of these individuals, which, and this is something we're going to address today. There are some of these individuals, when cornered with the facts, will not, will not deny them. And we're going to see this today, um, because we are going to be looking, i got lovely OBS uh, keyed up so everything's backwards but um, we're going to see this facts scriptural facts are facts and uh, again we are going to be addressing the disgusting free grace easy believism okay all right now I, I want to I want to get some things out here for you to digest we're going to be looking at the comment section of Monday's video I, now, if you've watched any video that the Lord has given me to do, you, and he, my enemies can testify of this, I'm not going to attack you personally. My enemies can attest to this. If I'm going to go at someone personally, I will not hold back, unfortunately. And when it comes to someone who is a clear enemy of our Lord Jesus Christ, like Mr. Hidden in Lucifer's loins, those are all adjectives, um, I have no regrets or repent of nothing that I have said of that devil. Nothing. I have no regret or repent of nothing that I have said against a true enemy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? I don't. I don't. All right? But... I'm not going to be addressing these individuals personally. I am going to be addressing some of the things that you said in the comment said, <laughs> typed in the comments section. Okay? If I were going to be going at you personally, like I said, my enemies can attest to this, I would do it. I would do it. And that is not the case today. Actually, I'm going to show you a perfect example of some of the things that I've been warning you people about, brethren, that we have been discussing. We're going to see it exemplified in the comment section of Monday's video. Okay? Now, very quickly about the comment section. Uh, hey, this is America, Jack. Okay? You want to believe in Mickey Mouse? Go right ahead. You know, knock yourself out. All right? Uh, you want to come here to the channel that the Lord has given me uh, and leave a comment? God, knock yourself out, okay? Knock yourself out. I'm an adherent of do unto others as you would have them do unto you. If you come here peaceably, even though I might totally disagree with you, you disagree with me, I think you're a raging heretic and you, <laughs> vice versa, you come peaceably, you will be treated peaceably. You come being a putz, I'm your huckleberry. I'm, I will be sarcastic with you sometimes. Yes, I will. I'm fluent in sarcasm. Not like others are more fluent than I, but I will, okay? You come around with profanity, making innuendos, uh, you will be blocked immediately. Ain't nobody got time for that. 
Okay, you do creepy things like respond to every single comment. That'll get you out of here right away. Well, otherwise, you know, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. I also have to warn you of this. Okay. There are brethren. Five brethren. Who I trust with my wife. Who are moderators for the channel that the Lord has given me. And they know who they are. Sometimes some they forget, but they know who they are. Um, if I, for example, I might see one a comment and be like, ah, oh, whatever, dude. One of the moderators, one of the brethren might see that very same comment and be like, I don't like that, and get rid of it. The people who are moderators on the channel that the Lord has given me, I trust with my wife. I trust their judgment. So where I might not have a problem with something, and they do, I will trust my brother's judgment. If they like, I see a comment, and it's like, ah, whatever. And then they see and get rid of it. It's like, hey, Brad, I got rid of, oh, okay. They have that liberty to do so. Okay, I trust the people. I trust them who all act as moderators on this channel. So like, I'm just telling you, all right? I'm just telling you. Okay. If I'm going to delete your comment, by the way, I will I will do kind of a little thing to you where I'll uh, drop a link to a thing or something or or leave a comment and then delete your thing and block you, okay? I I do that. Okay? I do that because I'm not into this circular let's keep the argument going. There has to come an end to it. Okay? But like I said, if a moderator, uh, one of the moderators, one of the brethren, delete a comment, um, they have that liberty to do so, and I trust their judgment. Okay? Just so you know. All right? Are we clear? Hmm? All right. All right. Now, enough of that. Not going to be this uh, big video today, Lord willing. Um, turn in your authorized version. Today is the 19th, and it's Juneteenth. Was uh, I made mention of this in another video. There is some weird holiday called Juneteenth. I address it on the other backup channel. But um, uh, anyway, Proverbs 19, just to start. Verses 1 on to verse 3. Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. The fool says in his heart, in his heart, there is no God. Most Christians, most Christians would never with their lips deny the existence of God. Okay? But, hold your place, as it saith in Titus, Titus Agar, <laughs> if you know what that's a reference onto, I'm sorry. But in Titus, chapter 1, verses 15 and 16, unto the pure, all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and their conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God. But in works they deny him. Being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. And we have been saved by our Lord Jesus Christ unto good works. Not works that are salvific. Okay? But as ambassadors for Christ. Alright? Alright? So a lot of these Christians will never say with their lips, but they demonstrate otherwise in their behavior. Okay? All right? And they like to cling like we addressed in Monday's video, which uh, only one of the gainsayers actually addressed what was in the video. And hey, if you're one of these <laughs> free gracers and you watched Monday's video in its entirety. Good for you. Good for you. All right, that, that's good. Okay, at least you did that.
Okay, you want to attack it and do all your little silly videos and do what, and, and at least use a little scripture, and we're going to address that too. Okay, uh, if you're a free gracer and you watched Monday's video in its entirety, I know, I know the annoying voice, and no, I whatever your excuse is, but if you watched it or listened to it, good for you, good, good. At least, at least you gave it that. And that's all that anyone should expect, especially from someone who is a work salvationist. We'll, we'll get to that, okay? But a fool son is in, in his heart, there is no God. And I gotta tell you, you, if you are a Trinitarian, if you are a Trinitarian, you believe that, being polite, one singular God consists of three persons. I didn't ask the one individual what was a person because, I did, you know, he already gave evidence in what direction he would go. Uh, philosophical, and I, I ain't nobody got time for that. But scripture tells you what a person is. Now, it doesn't say scripturally this is a person. No. But you got to remember that you and I are made in the image of God. We have a spirit. We have a soul. We have a body. Okay? That is a person. A spirit, a soul, and body. An amul. Okay? They have a body and a spirit. An amul don't have a, have a soul. The only thing in scripture that you can ever point to is that he made man a living soul. You do not see one reference of any animal having a soul. You don't. Okay? So you and I are made in the image of God. God forbid there are three Brad Pauls out there. Oh, y'all, you know, one of me is enough, right? One of you is enough. You know, and you, I got to give His Holiness uh, from Maine credit for that one video he did. That was brilliant, where he did the three of him standing. That that was brilliant. That I, You got to give the credit to where it's due on that one. That was brilliant. That was a brilliant video, okay? There are not three of me. There's one of me, but I consist of a spirit, soul, and body, just like you do. Okay? And we're, we're going to address this. And I bring that up because if you are a Trinitarian, you don't believe in the actual God who is. You don't. You believe in a little G God who is created by Satan. The three person one God concept had its inception in Babylon with the Queen of Heaven, Nimrod and Ninus. Okay? Alright? Egypt! Isis, Horus, Set. The Egyptian Trinity with the Jesuits and the Catholic buildings. Uh, you know, you see the IHS. They tell you that it's Jesus Hamadan Salvatore. Jesus, the Savior of Mankind in Latin. No, it's Isis, Horus, Set. The Egyptian Trinity. And of course, and this is documentable historically. The very first doctrine pushed by Roman Catholicism. One And you, you guys can prove this. See for yourself. One God and three persons. And it's interesting too. Because, okay, you're a Trinitarian. And I'm not, and hey, you, you Trinitarians, you go, you want to leave your comments, okay? I'm not arguing with you, okay? Come here, look at me. Trinitarian, you are not going to convince me that the Trinity is the God who is. Because it isn't the God who is. And for all you Trinitarians, let me make myself very clear, okay? <laughs> the 
to hell with the Trinity. You heard me right. I don't fear false gods. I don't. And if that offends you, take offense in the gate and don't let it hit you in the buttocks on the way out. Okay? The Trinity is a disgusting mockery of who God actually is. And I have no fear or regrets of mocking something that isn't the true God. Okay? All right? So if you're trying to, you come along in the comment section and you go, go ahead and say blasphemy. I, you're right. I will blaspheme the Trinity because the Trinity is not who God is. And think about this, Mr. Christian, and some of you Bible-believing, King James Bible-believing Christians who believe in the Trinity. You, you're against Rome, huh? Rome got everything wrong. Rome has everything wrong, right? Well, except December 25th and the one God in three persons, huh? So, okay, think about that, people. Rome has everything wrong with it. But they got who God actually is, right? Think about that. Think about that, Mr. King James Bible-believing Christian who's a Trinitarian. Trinitarian, you speak against Rome, which most people, you know, they try to be respectful to Rome. <coughs> okay. Uh, I don't hate the Roman Catholic. I hate Rome. I, I make no bo bones about that, okay? You guys know where I stand, okay? All right? At least you know where I stand, all right? So again, I, I, I'm going to demonstrate this. Um, you believe in the Trinity. You don't believe in the God who is. Okay? So then that begs me ask the question, are you a fool? The fool says in his heart there is no God. You believe in the Trinity. That's not the real God. Period. And remember... You are wasting your time if you're going to try to convince me. Ain't going to happen. Ain't going to happen. Anyway, let's continue in Proverbs 19. Also, the soul, also that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. And he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. The foolishness of man perverteth his way. Speaking, behaving as if you say in your heart there is no God. When you come around saying that is by grace through faith from beginning to end. That you save yourself because you just believe. That's foolish. That's foolish. Okay? And again, and the, the video for this will be in the description box. It's a short video. Free grace does not appear in Scripture. Free grace does not appear in Scripture, dear friend. Is this your standard? Is it? Some of you claim it is. Okay? Free grace... Love them freely or freely by His grace, yes. But phrase match it. Go ahead. Free grace does not appear in Scripture. And it is a gift given of God to man freely. But, and, and here's something that every single one of you free gracers avoid. Guess what, dear friend? And hey, Got a video on it. You don't want to watch it. That's your problem. God's grace unto us does cost something. Oh, take offense, take a gate, boy. There's a little personal dig at you. You know what his grace costs? Your self-righteousness. And as I saw a video done by a brother that was absolutely beautiful. 
absolutely beautiful video of a brother who exhibited in a video brokenness, contrition, and true fear of the Lord. And see, that's something that you free gracers don't have. Okay? You don't. You know, The foolishness of man perverteth his way, and his heart fretteth against the Lord. God's grace to you, it is given to you freely of God, which cost him everything, okay? Yes, it did. But it being given to, he gives it to us freely. Yes, he does. But there's a price for the grace that he gives us, and that price is something that you free gracers, and this is personal, that you free gracers don't want to pay. Then you come up with, well, prayer is a work. Repentance is going from unbelief to belief. Calling on the name of the Lord is a work. See, you give yourself away there, friend, when you do that. Okay? Why? Because God's Saving grace costs us our self-righteousness. Brokenness. And you free gracers. I, I have not met one. I, I have met individuals who were tainted with some free grace, but are actually saved people. Okay? Okay? All right, but they, they kind of grab it. Why, I don't know. <laughs> but I, I have run into uh, saints who have been defiled by free grace teaching. Yes, I have. Okay, yes, I, I've, I've come across several of them, actually. And one sister who, praise the Lord, got out of that right quick. Praise the Lord. Okay? But see, that's the thing. The foolishness of man perver uh, perverteth his way, and his heart fretteth against the Lord. Just believe and receive. You saved yourself by your own belief. The object of your faith, free gracer, is your faith. Just like the metaphysical mind science teaching of Mary Baker Eddy and the name it and blame it Pentecostals, dear friend. Okay? That never got answered. That never, none of you have, to my knowledge, none of you have ever answered that scripturally. Okay? You're in a false system and you're worshiping Satan. Okay? Now, looking at verse 2. And that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. And he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. Proverbs 7. Oh yeah, boy. 22 unto the close. 21, excuse me. Unto the close of Proverbs 7. Talking about a harlot. Mystery of Babylon the Great. The mother of harlots abominations of the earth. The mother. And free grace is a extension of ecumenical Vatican II. Because hey, doesn't matter if you're a Baptist, Presbyterian, Catholic, German Catholic, Pentecostal, Baptist, whatever. You just believe and receive. Aha! <laughs> It's an ecumenical pond scum doctrine that has its basis in Rome. Okay? Some of you are actually very sincere in your assertions to this. And, and you know, <laughs> okay, okay. And, the, and we'll see. The one dude was cordial. The one dude came, uh, uh, the one dude came uh, peaceably, and he was treated peaceably. Like I said, you come around peaceably, I'll treat you peaceably. You want to be a putz? <laughs> I'm your huckleberry, okay? All right, and, I, and I'll, I'll tell you, my name is Brad, not Karen, okay? 
But Proverbs 7, verses 21 unto the close. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. His grace is absolutely free. He gives it freely. Yes, he does. But see, right there, you guys are twisting what is free. And, and everyone, you know, love or fear. Love or fear. I've got to write this down. Love or fear. I've run into guys who said, I didn't, get, I didn't come to the Lord because of fear. I came because of love. And then, lo and behold, they teach just believe and receive, not rightly divine the word of truth, and blah, 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 blah. Okay? All right? <laughs> Being broken of your self-righteousness, dear friend, is a requirement. And see, you guys call that works. The works that Scripture denounces for salvation today is the works that are referenced in the law. Okay? And you guys, to defend yourselves, say prayer is a work. Then why pray, right? If prayer is a work, why are you praying? Okay? Prayer is a work. Calling on the name of the Lord, that was for the Jews. It's a doctrine that crosses dispensational lines. We've talked about that. In Joel, it was for deliverance, physical deliverance in a dispensation where, uh, where the um, eternal security was not there and the Lord hadn't died yet. Okay? It's here today. Okay? Calling on the name of the Lord. Okay? He died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? See, that, that's, that's the thing. That's the thing. Okay? And here's another thing. Here's another hidden tenant that you free gracers purport, but you don't say it. Okay, and I'm, we're going to look at an example of this in the comments section, and I'll address it when you, I show it to you. In the Garden of Eden, it is I, I, clear as day that it wasn't by grace through faith. It's, it's I mean, Ray Charles could see that. Okay, that, I mean, that is obvious. And when you go to a free gracer with that, it's like, dude, dude, that, that was a work. Okay, come on. That They saw God in the garden. Okay, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Okay, faith was not necessary when you can see him. Okay, I mean, that, I mean, that's, 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 you don't need a brain for that one. <laughs> you really don't. Okay, so when a free gracer will admit to the obvious, that's a good start. But then it's like, oh, well, oh, you mean after the garden? It was by faith. They like to, and this we, and rightly dividing the word of truth, uh, videos on uh, rightly dividing the word of truth being dispensational will be for you in the description box. Okay, they want to tell you that the patriarchal dispensation where Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? It was identical to today. Well, what was the faith then during the patriarchal period? I didn't ask the one dude because I, I knew what his answer was going to be. What was their faith then in the patriarchal period? By grace through faith. Faith in what? Faith in what? The death, burial, and resurrection that hadn't happened yet? And that they did not know about. So, what does that mean? A veiled, they were looking forward to the cross in the very beginning. Ah! Ah! And, okay, and here's the easiest way to debunk that nonsense. Okay, also you can go to Matthew, you guys, like, before the death, burial, and resurrection. Uh, you can go to Matthew when the Lord rebukes Satan and Peter. Get thee behind me, Satan. Okay, if they were looking forward to the cross, why did Peter do what he did? Okay, that, that's, that's what it is. That's why I didn't ask this gentleman. Okay, that's why I didn't ask him. Because I knew what his answer would be. Okay, all right. And I've run into this before quite a few times. Okay. All right, 
the patriarchal period is similar to the dispensation that we have today. What's the difference? There was an element of obedience involved. The Lord said to Noah, build an ark. He built an ark. God said to Abram, get out. He got out. Okay? Also, there is no eternal security. Because what is eternal security? The seal until the day of redemption. And Jesus Christ hadn't died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet. Simple. Similar. But not identical. And see, y'all, that's what you would have done, Dad. That's what you would have done. Come on now. Come on. If I would have asked you, and what was their faith in during the patriarchal period? You would have said, I know you would have. I've dealt with it. Death, burial, and resurrection. Ephesians chapter 3. Here's the best place to go to debunk this stupidity. For this cause I, Paul, verses 1 on to verse uh, 6. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word, that means that us Gentiles being grafted in. Okay? This is another verse that these guys will askew to just to, to say that, well, grace changes in the dispensation. God's grace, unmerited favor, is there in every single dispensation, or else we go up like a puff. Salvation, the way a man is made, mankind is made right with God and or saved, is what changes. Okay? Okay? And, I, I, and it makes me glad when a free gracer actually is like, okay, you have to. You have to, or you'd be an idiot like Jack Smack. Okay? It's like, well, in the, Garden, in the Garden of Eden, it was by grace through faith. Dude, you're an idiot. You see me? You're an idiot. You're an idiot. The Garden of Eden. Oh, do you mean after the... Uh, the minute they were kicked out, it was the patriarchal period. And see, you bringing that up, that, that right there, that's a, a you have God said moment. But anyway, for this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to your word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which which in other ages dispensations was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ Jesus in Christ by the gospel. In other ages, they were not looking forward to the cross in the Old Testament. There were types. Okay? The Passover. Yes. The, the ark itself. Yes. Noah's ark. Okay? Yes. They were not looking forward to the cross. And see, well, well, after the garden, what was their faith in? It was in God. Amen. 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 But see, in God and what means? Come on, you would have said death, burial, and resurrection by grace through faith. No, no, no. There was an element of obedience as a requirement there. Because if Noah didn't do what he was told to do, things would have been different. Same with Abram. And God doesn't force people to do things, remember. Okay? There was a thing of obedience that isn't there, that isn't like it is today. Because ultimately... Ultimately, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit. Eternal security is here today in this dispensation. And he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? Remember, whenever you run into someone pulling something like that, you take them here. They were not looking forward to the cross in the Old Testament. They were not. That's heresy. 
Now go back to Proverbs 7. Verse 21 on to the close. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. Too good to deny. Too good to be true. Just believe and receive. It doesn't cost you anything. You, you shouldn't do certain things, but don't worry if you do. It's all free. Absolutely free of charge. And if you act now... But see, it's given to us freely. It is. Absolutely. Amen, amen. Amen. But see, it costs us brokenness. It costs us accepting, manning up. I put Christ on the cross because of my sin. You free gracers, you don't get that far. You hide. We're all sinners. I, you know what? I talked to one. I, I've talked to quite a few of you free gracers. Even mano y mano here in Woodstock. You know what gets you guys going? Jeffrey Dahmer, I believe, is in heaven. I believe Nebuchadnezzar is in heaven. Manasseh, I believe, is in heaven. You think Jeffrey Dahmer is in heaven? And you think I'm lost? Yes, I do. What are you saying? You're better than they are. Hey, dude, come on. Come on, dude. <laughs> Woo, it's hot in here. <laughs> come on, dude. Come on. <laughs> I've, been, I've, I've talked to quite a few of you guys. Quite a few of you. You like to divert with little things as snippets of knowledge that you have come from your wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish. You stay the course with these guys, brethren. Stay the course with them. Okay? But with her foot much fair speech, just believe and receive. You don't have to, you know, that prayer's a work. Call on the name of the Lord is a work. You know, you don't need to be a new creature or that's what, <laughs> you know, that's... <laughs> Christ in you, the hope of glory, sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? You don't have to just believe and receive. Go about your way and blah, 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 blah. Oh, and when that's the criteria, oh, wow, there's millions and billions and trillions of people that are going to go to heaven. <laughs> right. 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 But with her much fair speech, just believe and receive. He goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter or as a fool to the correction of the stocks. It's, too, it's like, wow, that's so good. I can't pass that up. Doesn't cost me anything. I could just hide it. Well, we're all sinners. But see, the grace, by His grace through our faith, His grace does cost you something. And, that, and see, and it's a price so big that most of you free great, a lot of you don't want to pay it. What is that price? Simple. I'm not as bad as so-and-so. I just believe. Till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hasteth to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths. For she hath cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell. Going down to the chamber. Now, Isaiah 28, Isaiah 28, I'm going to touch on something that we have touched on before. Now we're going to get to, we are going to get to this in OBS, okay? Ah, there we go, okay. All right, browser, interact, okay. All right, now, 
I am not attacking you personally. I am addressing what some of these guys said. Okay? Now here's the comment section. Alright, sort by newest first. Oh, okay. There you are. There's the one individual whose comments I am going to be addressing personally. But I do, before we get to that individual, where's that one guy? Oh, uh, this one, dude, do a live stream so I can cook you. I'm not going to be doing, uh, and you guys went along, play your little juvenile high school, schoolyard. You're a coward. You know I'd win. And you go, go. You want some milk and cookies? Isn't it time for a nap? Isn't it time for a nap for you, huh? Go, 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 run along, little boy. Run along. But I, I told that guy that it ain't happening, okay? Um, this one, this one individual. Now, this is an example. Um, uh, and the one dude's like, bro, take your medicine. <laughs> and uh, this is what I thought I was going to have a problem with this guy. This guy who said, bro, take your medicine. He put a peach there. Now, for those of you who do not know what that is, a peach is a reference onto the buttocks. Okay? Use your imagination. I thought I was going to have a problem with that guy, but he went away. Good. You come back doing that again, buddy. I'll get rid of you just like that. Okay? All right? But th this one guy here, this one guy here, I, I, okay, he asked, why are we a cancer and a plague? And you can see here, I responded to him. Uh, hello, I kind of answered that in the video. And I did. Okay? And this one right here, he, he said to me that you were praying for me. And I'm, I was, I'm sincere here. Th thanks, you know, the thanks for the thought, but don't pray for me to your God, okay? Because, dear friend, you're a Trinitarian. I'm just guessing. And if I'm wrong, if you're not a Trinitarian, I will publicly apologize to you by name of your channel. If you're not a Trinitarian, but I'm guessing you are. Um, don't, please, don't pray to your God for me. And like the dear brother, perfect, perfectly. Uh, you can read it on your, on your own time in yesterday's video, which will be in the description box, okay? Uh, th this one dude here, he came cordially, and he was cordial. Leave him alone, okay? Uh, don't pray, you free gracers, please don't pray for me to your God. Okay, your God is the one in the middle. Trinity. Ah, the Trinity is not God. Okay? So don't do that. But like I said, this guy came peaceably. You know? Be, treat him peaceably. That's how that works. Okay? And then he's like, and then he said, be careful saying you hate grace. Dude, the grace that comes of the free grace movement by your God, the three-person Trinity, is not the real grace of God. There is a huge difference. There is a huge difference. I, and I say it again. I hate the grace offered by sleazy believism. I hate it because it is not the true grace of God. Okay? Okay? The grace given by free grace is not the real grace of God. It's a license to do as you, to have your cake and eat it too. Eat it too. Want nothing to do with that. Okay, there is a difference. Okay? I am saved by His grace through my faith. Amen, amen. And the one dude, he gave the, he gave the right scriptures. And I'm like, amen, amen. 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 All right. Now, now, I and Mr. Bible Rule 7, I, I've seen you because I, I've watched some of uh, Mr. Sunken Eyed's videos before. Uh, uh, he's, in, he's amusing. Okay. I'm going to address you what you said. Okay. I'm going to address what you said. I'm not addressing you personally. If you're going to make this personal, then it'll be very short and quick. But in Isaiah 28, before we do this, okay, here's a dig that you gave to me. And I, I passed over it, okay? I believe in Jesus. I know Jesus is God the Father, sir. I'm assuming you're a dude. 
I'm going to send a few scriptures that prove Jesus is God. I don't know if you believe that. There's the dig at me. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ. Oh, <clears throat> Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. <laughs> you happy? Okay, that doesn't prove anything. But uh, Jesus is God. Jesus is God the Father. I believe in Jesus. Oh, I absolutely I do. Which one, sir? See, you, you, and you, you, this very common. You mention, you show that you're a Trinitarian. Okay? But here, here's about you, sir. What you did on the channel. Isaiah 28, verses 1 on verse 13. Woe to the crown, woe to the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower, which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine, the wine that comes from Rome. You're a Trinitarian. Behold, the Lord hath a mighty and strong one, which as a tempest of hail and a destroying storm, as a flood of mighty waters overflowing, shall cast down to the earth with the hand the crown of pride, the drunkards of Ephraim, shall be trodden under feet. I'm saved because I just believe. I'm not as bad and so as so and so. And the glorious beauty which is on the head of the fat valley shall be a fading flower. And as the hasty fruit before the summer, which when he that looketh upon it seeth, while it is yet in his hand, he eateth it up. And that day shall the Lord of hosts be for a crown of glory and for a diadem of beauty unto the residue of his people, the small remnant of us who are actually saints. Okay? And for a lowercase a spirit of judgment. There's that thing about judgment. Uh, to him that sitteth in judgment. And for strength to them that turn the battle to the gate. Like, like the one video that the brother did. Um, it was a walk and talk video. A beautiful. Beautiful video. Beautiful video. Um, and that was done in the spirit of judgment. Judging first himself. See, we judge ourselves continually, hence we are able to judge you by a perfect standard, not one that we come up with, okay? <clears throat> but they also have erred through wine. Look, you're a Trinitarian, you don't believe in the true God. Okay? I'm not going and I'm not gonna argue with you, okay? I have said what I have said. There are videos on the channel about the Trinity and its devilishness, its heresy. It's, I mean, the Trinity triangle thing is basically the female matrix. Okay, give me a break. All right? To hell with the Trinity. And I have no qualms or fear of saying that because it is not God. But we'll address that a little later, okay? But they also have erred through wine and through strong drink, are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. For all the tables are full of vomit and filthiness, so that there is no place clean. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. And as it says in Peter, I believe that is 1 Peter chapter 3. I believe that is. Not 2 Peter, Brad. 1 Peter, no, it's 1 Peter chapter 2. Verses 1 on verse 3. Wherefore, laying, laying aside all malice, and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. As newborn babes desire the sincere, sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Okay? For precept must be upon precept. 
precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Okay? For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, to whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, that they would not hear. Proverbs 10, verse 19, and the video will be in the description box, Professional Christians, where we get into this in great detail. Proverbs 10, verse 19, in the multitude of words there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. Paul preached till midnight, preaching the truth of God. Okay? Someone who comes around and, okay, look, look, at, look at this, look at this, okay, all right, look at all of this stuff, all right, I could give many, I'm not going to read that, you could, the, the video will be, you, you can see it right here, you can look for yourself, okay, you can look for yourself, uh, Ecclesiastes 10, Ecclesiastes 10, Okay, go to Ecclesiastes 10. Alright, this is what I'm addressing with this individual, what he did. Ecclesiastes 10, verses 11 on, verse 15. Surely the serpent will bite without intent and enchantment, and a babbler is no better. The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool will swallow up himself. Fool says in his heart there is no God. You're a Trinitarian? The Trinity is not God. So you're spouting off all these things which you claim proves one God in three persons, which it doesn't. The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool will swallow up himself. The beginning of the words of his mouth is foolishness. And the end of his talk is mischievous madness, insanity. That's what that means. Okay? A fool also is full of words. A man cannot tell what shall be, and what shall be after him, who can tell him? The labor of the foolish wearieth every one of them, because he knoweth not how to go to the city. And the city of the great king. Who's in the city of the great king? The Lord Jesus Christ. So, Trinitarian, you're not believing in the true God. You're a free gracer. You just believed and received and saved yourself without any brokenness, contrition, or fear of the Lord. Okay? All right? Back to Isaiah chapter 28, verse 13. But the word of the Lord was on to them. Who are them? Let me show you something. Okay, now this, like I said, this guy came peaceably, and we had a cordial discussion, okay? This one right here, this one right here, is like, I'm gonna... It's like, <laughs> okay, um, all these verses are supposed to prove free grace when a uh, friend... Free grace does not appear in Scripture. What you are the what you sir did in that comment is this. But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken, and snared, and taken. I mean, it's like what? Okay, it's like all these are supposed to prove uh, free grace. Free grace does not appear in Scripture. Okay, His grace is freely given to us. But, dear friend, His grace, His true saving grace unto us, costs us brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord, which you free gracers deny. You're just rambling, sir. You are just rambling. Just posting things 
to make yourself look wise. Professing yourself to be wise. And I'll leave it that because I don't want to make it personal. This is, you're just rambling here, sir. And you, and you guys are the one. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. And uh, interesting, Matthew 11, which is before the death, burial, and resurrection. <laughs> Free grace. Aha. See? See? This is just rambling. This is just rambling. And I was, and look at this. Look at this. Look at this. And he's like, that's all proving free grace. You're that, that free grace, okay? Luke said that's before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? By grace through faith is for this dispensation also, sir. You're, you're just rambling. I, I actually was concerned that, um, that one of the brothers was going to remove that. Uh, because, and I'm glad you didn't, brother. You know who you are. Okay, I'm glad you didn't. Uh, because, like I said, I wanted, to, I wanted to demonstrate that to you. I wanted to demonstrate that to you. All right? That, that's an example of what we have talked about. Okay? Paul, using scripture upon scripture, preaching unto midnight the truth of the gospel. Somebody like that, just rambling, picking things at random. Okay? But the word of the Lord was unto them, you people who are not saved, you sad free grace adherents. But the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Okay? You were just rambling off things, man. Okay? Okay. Uh... Proof text, and then you give this other one about workspace, and the what's he what you're inferring there is that I am workspace salvation. No, I'm not. Okay, the works that are talked about that are refuted as salvific today are the works of the law. Okay, prayer is not a work. Okay, contrition is not a work. <laughs> All right, repentance is not a work. Calling upon the name of the Lord is not a work. And see in that. Right there, they, these are 80 or so works-based proof text trying to prove, say, that that's what I'm preaching, which it is not, which, is, which I'm not, okay? And I asked this individual if he was seminary trained, and he's like, no, but he said that he wrote a book, good for you, good for you, okay, and, and something about King James only, okay? All right. Okay. Good. But now let's get to this thing. All right. Uh, the Trinity. Where, where, where do you say that about the Trinity? Um, okay. I, I, I'll have to read this. Okay. I could give many more, but hope that helps. God can be three in one. Spirit, soul, and body. Yes. But not in the same sense, or that would be a logical contradiction. Hmm. Okay? He is one God in essence. Ah, see, Catholic doctrine. Catholic. See, you got to revert to what Rome gives you because the Trinity is a Roman Catholic doctrine. It's a perfected Babylonian, Egyptian, Roman Catholic doctrine. It is of the devil. Okay? Possessing traits that must be exclusive to one being, eternal being, omnipotent, omnipotence, but multi -pers multiple persons. Uh, no! Not even Robert Breaker could find a verse that says that the little bird pooping on people was a person. Okay? Not even him. Alright? One God in three persons is heresy. But I'm going to show you in Scripture where that comes from. Stay tuned. Okay? If these persons possess those exclusive traits, they are the same being by definition. The Bible makes it clear Jesus possesses three traits along with the Father. Yes, the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He is the Father. Okay? God is a spirit. God is bigger. And there, well, how can Jesus be praying to himself? Okay? God is bigger than we can imagine. See, you Trinitarians make a make excuse me excuse me excuse me excuse me 
All right. Beg your pardon. All right. <laughs> Beg your pardon for that. I forgot to turn off uh, my uh, my ringer. Okay. See, you you Trinitarians have put God in this box of three persons, which he is not. Okay? God is not three persons. God is one God that consists of spirit, soul, and body. Atheists can debunk that. Muslims can debunk that. Okay? But let me show you something. In Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. Uh, sorry, brother, you called me. I love you. I don't like being disturbed. <laughs> uh, that's my fault. I should have turned off the ringer. Okay, I love you. I'm praying for you. Okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, this this is it. Okay, uh, you guys have gotten the you guys got the gist. Now I'm getting out of this, so you don't need to see that anymore. Okay, Revelation chapter 13. Here's the Trinity. And note when it is in the book of Revelation. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Mm. And the beast which I saw was like, a, was like unto a leper, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth is the mouth of a lion. And the tie-in for that is mouth as a lion. 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. Verse 8 and 9. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion... Walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Okay? Go back to Revelation 13. And his mouth is the mouth of a lion, and the dragon, that old serpent, the devil, gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. I personally believe that that's when Satan is going to enter that man of sin, the son of perdition. You can reference that with the sop that Jesus gave to Judas Iscariot. That man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be a Hebraic Jew. Okay? And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. The dragon, Satan. The beast. The beast, that man of sin, the son of perdition. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there were given unto him, uh, and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months, three and a half years. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, the third rebuilt temple, and them that dwell there dwell in heaven. How does he do that? He's going to go into the third rebuilt temple and I believe he's going to just be like I am. And I believe that he's going to have the visage of the Roman Catholic Jesus. Okay? And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Okay? Saints. Remember, I personally believe that the man of sin, the son, that man of sin, son of perdition, is going to refer to you who get left behind as Christians. I really believe that. Okay, you'll find out if you're left behind. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of the life, book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Now pay attention. We have the dragon Satan, the beast that man of sin, the son of perdition. See another. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. Boy. 
Oh boy. There you go. The dragon. The beast. And we will see. This is the false prophet. The dragon. The devil. The beast. That man of sin. The son of perdition. The false prophet. Hey. One plus one plus one equals three. No. One plus one plus one equals one, right? Trinitarian. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and spake as a dragon. And we've talked about this. A dragon speaks very polite and cordial and sounds oh so sweet. The words drip with honey, but they're inwardly a ravening words. Okay? That's how a dragon speaks. Okay? Softly, smoothly. Itches your ear. God loves you. Just believe and receive. Yeah. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. You know, you Trinitarians, I would have a little bit more respect for your Roman Catholic belief if you would, meaning, it's like, hey, at least you go to the one place in Scripture where your satanic devilish trinity is actually addressed. The dragon, Satan. The beast, that man of sin, the son of perdition. And this other one, the false prophet. There's your one God in three persons. It's right there. It's of Satan. And it's going to be manifest in a time when the body of Christ is not on the earth. Where eternal security is there only for the 144,000 Jews. And see, you free gracers are preparing people who are going to be left behind to just believe and receive and take that mark in their right hand or in their forehead and be damned to hell. But then again, most of you say, oh, you can cut it off or... <laughs> and go in if your hand offend you. Okay, see, you guys are... You, um, you personally, like the one dude we saw who was cordial, okay, who was, you know, who came peaceably, treated peaceably. And even the one guy, he was kind of peaceably even though he made digs at me. That's fine. That's fine. I'm digging back at you. But I'm trying not to be personal to you. Now, if you take it personal and you come around, hey, Doug, you make it this far, you pull that again, you brethren, you pull that again, you will be blocked. Ain't nobody got time for that. Okay? All right? You pull something like that again, just rattling off Scripture verses, and claiming they mean something when you're, you're, you're doing things before the death, burial, and resurrection, and you're saying that's proof of free grace. Dad, Dad, come on. Come on. Come on. Let's continue. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was he. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. Kind of like what Elijah did. Okay? And note also, this is after Moses and Elijah. Where there is a come up hither. Yes, there is. But people see Moses and Elijah ascend up into heaven. When the come up hither for us happens, it's in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. It's not like that stupid, uh, uh, what was that? Oh, what was that movie? I can't even remember. The one that the Pope was uh, raptured in. <laughs> okay, I can't even remember. Oh, um, Left Behind. Okay, when we go, it's going to be like that. Anyway, verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles. Yeah. Uh, the Jews require a sign. Anyway, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all both small and great, 
rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here's wisdom. Let him that hath understanding departing from evil. Here's wisdom. Fear the Lord. Let him that hath understanding departing from evil count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 scored 6. World Wide Web. WWW. Okay? WWW. World Wide Web. 666. Okay? The, what is the end that justifies the means of the free grace movement? Revelation 14. Revelation 14. Revelation 14. Ah, uh, let's see. Verses 9 on to verse 12. Revelation 14, verses 9 on to verse 12. Here is the end that justifies the means for the free gracers. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man, any man, Worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. Never ending torment, Andy. Soul annihilationist, never ending torment. And they have no rest day nor night, whoso worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. And these same free gracers, it's by grace for faith during time of Jacob's trouble. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. It's faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble, dear people. But see, this, this is the end that justifies the means for the free grace movement. To convince you poor people who get left behind because you saved yourself by your just believing that when the mark of the beast comes around, you take it thinking you're once saved, always saved in a dispensation where it is faith and works, unless you're one of the 144,000 Hebraic Jews, uh, you're going to go to hell. That's the end that justifies the means. That's why... <laughs> I spit on free grace. That's why I hate it. It is of Satan. Its ultimate end is to deceive you, to damn you. You'll see. You'll see. And like the atheist says, it's like, oh, you just resort to that, you'll find out. You, you will. And by the time most of you free gracers who are deceived find out it will be too late. Revelation 16, verses 9 under verse 14. And men were scorched with heat and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. Even during, even when it's hitting the fan, as it were, during the time of Jacob's trouble, which is going to be such a time in history that's going to make World War II look like nothing. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and the kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. 
that, that was one thing. Oh, uh, they, they were saying that uh, this was fulfilled nowadays with one of the rivers being dried up. It's like, duh, that happens during the time of Jacob's trouble. But see, but see, one of the things you got to watch out for when you got someone coming around saying, well, the book of Revelation isn't chronological. Oh, so that means you can weave in that the drying up of whatever river happened a while ago is applicable for today? People, listen to me. If someone's telling you that the book of Revelation isn't chronological, they're seeking to defend a doctrine of man. Okay? I made that mistake myself. I used to think that the book of Revelation wasn't chronological. It is. It is. Someone who's, who ought to know better, and who does, comes around telling you that it's not, um, uh, that it's not chronological. They're seeking to defend a pet doctrine. Mark my words, saint. Mark my words and take warning. Okay. All right. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. See, this happens during the time of Jacob's trouble, after the redemption of the purchased possession, which happens in Revelation chapter 4. Okay? All right. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs. Frogs. You know, the, the plague of Egypt. You know, frog legs. I like frog legs with teriyaki and, or a little Tabasco sauce. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway. For they are the spirits of devils. Oh, wait, wait, wait. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, Satan, and out of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Hmm. We see the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. For they are the spirit, spirits of devils, working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Revelation 20, one verse. Revelation 20, one verse. Another one that people like to bring up today about Gog and Magog. That Gog and Magog is for uh, happening today. Um, Revelation 19 um, shows you that, uh, where is that? Uh, Revelation 19, or is it 20? Yeah, it's 20. Revelation 20 shows you that Gog and Magog, as referred to in Scripture, happens after the thousand years when Satan is loosed out of his prison. You don't have, we don't have to worry about the Gog and Magog thing for a long time. Unless, of course, the book of Revelation isn't chronological, then you can put it wherever you want. Anyway, Revelation 21 verse. Here's your trinity. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. The trinity, dear friend. This, this verse is for your trinity. There it is. The Trinity is of Satan. The Trinity is not of God. The Trinity got its birth in Babylon, crafted with every pun intended, in Egypt, perfected in Rome. It is a doctrine of devils. The Trinity is satanic. Muslims can figure that one out. Atheists can figure that one out. Okay? Dear friend. Dear friend. Dear, good, well-intending individual. Don't pray to me. Don't pray. Excuse me. Yeah, don't pray to me. Don't pray for me to your God. 
please, please, okay? Don't pray for me to your God in the middle, okay? Because your God is not the true God who is. Exodus chapter 20, verses 300, verse 5. Exodus 20, verses 300, verse 5. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Ye are your own gods. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. It's interesting, too, because the golden calf, the singular golden calf, these are your gods, O Israel. One singular golden calf, but yet these are your gods. Go figure that one out. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. And what are we reading to under verse 5? Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them like the Trinity. Three persons that make one. That's, that's insanity. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And let's read verse 6. And shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Jeremiah 16, verse 20. And then we'll be done. Then we'll, we'll be done. It's hot in here. <laughs> it's hot in here. Genera uh, Jeremiah 16, verse 21, one verse, one verse. Shall a man make gods unto himself, and they are no gods? Look, um... There, there, I, I, you know, there are those of you who believe in the nonsense of free grace who are actually, you know, good intending people, but you're, you're believing in a false system of belief. You're believing in something, in something false. You are preaching another gospel and another Jesus. The Trinity is not God. Okay? You're in league with Rome with that. Okay? And God's saving grace. Look at look at Paul. The Philippian jailer. The Philippian jailer was gonna kill himself. Okay? And worldly sorrow is leads to death. He didn't kill himself. He had godly sorrow. That's another one. They like, well the the uh, Philippian jailer, he just believed he, he was broken. He was gonna kill himself. Well, that's worldly sorrow. If it was worldly sorrow, he would have succeeded. Okay? Or they like Shimon the sorcerer. It's like, he just believed, but Peter was like, dude, you're not, called him out, you're not saved. See, the things that these guys go to to justify their heretical doctrine are easily explained, easily rebuked. But they keep going and going and going. Okay? You people have been warned. God's grace to us. God's grace is freely given. Yes, it is. Amen, amen, amen. Look at me, pal. Here's the problem, and here's what every single one of you are running away from. You've got to be broken in order to be fixed. I put the Lord on the cross because of my sin. And the Lord scared the hell out of me. And I, the lesser, called upon the greater. But see, when you forgo being broken of your self-righteousness, look at Paul. When you forgo that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief, but want to hide, well, we're all sinners. You think I'm lost and you think Jeffrey Dahmer's, Dahmer is in heaven? What does that mean? I'm better than he is? And the fear of the Lord, calling upon the name of the Lord, 
the lesser calling upon the greater. But see, you guys, you're the greater. Because you just believe and receive. You, you save yourself by your own belief. And your faith is in your faith, not upon the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God the Father. There are, like I said, there are some of you who are, you know, sincere. Um, you, you have a false gospel. You preach another Jesus. In the end, that justifies the means. Huh, I wonder where that came from. You're damning people to your, your doctrine that you're teaching, which is going to carry over into the time of Jacob's trouble. And remember, during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's by faith and works. Okay? And what's their faith in? Jesus is going to be coming back. Okay? And like I said, the, the guy, these guys just keep the rumor thing. Rumor. <laughs> rumor, yeah. These guys just keep their things going, going and going. And you know what? As long as you're going to keep going, I'm not going to answer your arguments because you guys, you guys won't answer any of the things that get brought up to you. But you just keep going in this way, that way. The, fine. You want to keep going? So will I. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching if you do. I did not mean to personally offend any of you. But if you are offended, take offense, take a gate. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.